everyone welcome to Archland. so we have here a build guide for michael and uh, so far i'm actually enjoying um using her kit so let's start off with what is she good at and what is she bad at well her strengths and her weaknesses so for strengths um her playstyle is doing buffs and also high mobility being able to do little damage and just run away so that's actually her strength kind of bit more um kind of bit um pesky if i can you know if i can say so buffs and mobility would be her core um tactic or strategy and um her weakness would be uh, as you can see here her stats you can actually build her quite nicely uh you can put her hp up to a her physical attack though is roughly going to be 200 points lower than either semi or who's the other one I forgot the other one but it's usually 200 points lower okay from the usual um the, the usual archetype for for assassin so she at this point for me is going to be around 960 or 970 something the usual archetype for assassins like semi is going to be at one one or one two so definitely going to have a smaller attack but very very mobile uh we're going to be discussing her kit in a while so improve um her um her physical attack is going to be key as well so that you know she could deal a little bit more damage than usual and the most important thing is going to be um adding to her physical defense she's not going to be doing good in close combat and also she's not going to be do be doing good in if she encounters archers so those are her weaknesses so as for her unique passive here so when your remaining hp is greater than 80 percent so it's above 80 percent physical attack is going to be at eight percent at the end of the action grants empower to to two highest physical attack or melee attack allies within the cross styles of seven and last for one term so ideally if you want to play her she has to attack then come back probably to where her allies are to have this buff because this only lasts for one turn so again she can be played with a little bit of damage but coming back to have those buffs okay so that is it so empower is as you can see here increase physical attack and, and melee attack by 20 which is actually big so you have to go back to where your allies are to buff them at least for one turn Okay, let's move on to her traits. Okay, so for her traits, let's let's go over the two rows. You have the top and the bottom. We'll go first with the bottom row. The bottom row obviously is not what I've chosen. So first, this going to be this is going to be self mobility. Although she 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 needs more mobility, she already has it here. This is actually good as part of her mobility this one adds a little bit more so if you want to build her with a lot of mobility in mind then the bottom row is going to be your you know your best bet so because this one after dealing damage if a target is defeated or dead gains mobility plus two so this is going to be lasting one turn then this this one however deals bigger damage because it's one times five 1 1.5 times the next one is going to be mobility for allies so at the end of of the action grants this is a passive grants agility to one random ally within one tile last one term the problem with this this is going to be random so you're not gonna know whether who the ally is it might be somebody that you don't want to move then then they give then this skill gives a random mobility adjustment and it's gonna not gonna be of good use to you so with that said we're gonna be going to the top one the top is going to be a passive 
when your remaining HP is less than 50. So when she has taken damage, uh, she's going to have a uh, uh, physical defense and magic defense. This is actually, I think, 12%. So this is one of the debuffs that she has in terms of um, giving her self protection. And the other one, okay, is going to be this one. This one is a buff for allies. So damage and buff to allies. So deal 0.5 damage to all enemies within range. So at the end of the action, grants uh, encourage. So increase damage dealt by 10 to all allies within three tiles so ideally she has to go first then she gives encourage and then the rest you know attack so this is a buff which is also good so this one to all tile to all allies within three tiles so again the mechanic of her uh being a buffer being a she's gonna deal damage but she has to come back so that is basically what I'm saying, and I think you should play her that way. This passive, however, you won't be using it because you will be using this. You'll be equipping this. Okay. So again, as you can see, I went with the top row. We'll go first with um, the mid one. So this one is Assassin's Path. Get, attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.7 damage before the battle for every tile move gains one random buff which is nice maximum five um this is for every tile moved so if you move five tiles then you gain five buffs so after the battle recovers hp equal to one times physical attack so this one you will have to you will be using eventually this will turn her into into a somehow of a monster because this one really makes her deal a lot of damage plus increases her survivability this is i think her her rage um the skill that, that charges so then the next one is going to be this one so jumps to the target location deals 0 0.5 damage to all enemies within range and gains gun protection so damage resistance cannot be dispelled consumes when damaged this one I really like because this makes you hop in to a group of enemies and also go out. Plus, it gives her much um, survivability for damage resistance. So, she has to come out once she does this. Okay, so, and the last one, this one would be again. So, damage dealt plus 8 after dealing damage can move again with remaining movement points. So, this makes her move after she attacks basically so that is it um let's go over uh one more skill that she has that i'm using um sorry i'm not using it this one is also a good one if you are going to um be up against um teams that are heavy on debuffs this one she converts uh, debuffs into buffs. So also, you can swap this out. For now, I'm actually using the jumping attack with God's Protection and this one. So th these are little damages, but I prefer actually the, the buffs that is been given here. Also this one, this gives buffs to all allies. And this one because this improves her movement. So if you, if you acquire her weapon we're going to be discussing it because you will be you can actually unequip this and equip this one so let's discuss that later so so far this one this skill is also a swap in depending on who you're up against if you're you're against heavy debuff teams then definitely you should use this and swap one of these okay so my recommendation for her it's it's actually very obvious you we're gonna have to be going with the top top row the last skill for for the bottom row is i think useless i'm not sure and i'm not saying it's really useless but it doesn't hold a lot of value so you're not going to be using that much 
So more or less, you'll be using the buffs here, especially this one. And this one, probably in the late game, you could use this once you have her uh, exclusive equipment or unique equipment. Okay, so for her runes, um, we're going to be going with, um, with the Battle Axe Kit. Because still, she's an assassin. And what I like about this is the damage resistance plus 10%. So that is why she still has this plus this gives her a bit of damage still because we still need her to deal damage. So this ups her damage quite a bit. And for the secondary would be uh, the knight. But this could be any set two piece set because you would want the HP for this one. Okay, so make sure that you have HP and um, to improve her survivability of course so that is her rune so if you have other options for her runes um you can actually comment down in the comment section sorry unique equipment not unique passive so for the unique equipment this is it it's a lance so sky plunder plus one critical plus five physical attack so when it's worn by michael increase physical attack and damage resistance by three percent under the inspired effect after using an active attack, dispel one random debuff from the enemy. I, I think this is... This was movement, if I can recall. After using an active attack. Because as you can see here, um, as discussed in, in the review. So initially, you have to sacrifice a passive slot for additional movement after attacking. That was the passive slot that I meant. Uh, once you get uh, Michael's unique equipment, you'll be able you'll get the ability out of the box. So she's one of the few characters from wh from whom the unique equipment passive can replace a normal skill. So I am still um, thinking that that is it. I think this is just a typo. I think this is just uh, wrong because if I can remember, this used to be right. The text used to be right. So again. Um, if you have her ultimate equipment, you could add more um, and add another passive in replacement with the existing one that I'm using. So I will go back to, to that skill. So this is what I'm, you know, what I'm saying. So if you have her exclusive weapon, you can actually um, unequip this and just equip another one, another passive. You can actually equip this one, so it you know it gives you more flexibility in terms of using the traits and the skills that she has. So let's go over her um, here experience and see um, how she's going to be used. Okay, guys. So this is um, part of the hero experience. Most of the skills that that um, they actually equipped here are the middle skills. So don't worry about, uh, you know, about not seeing the top or bottom skill. It, it doesn't matter at this point. This is the ultimate that I mentioned that is charging up. And this one is going to be converting the buffs. So let's do an attack here. Because this buff, this debuff will be converted into a buff. And will be killing... All the uh, one mage first, but um, the the objective here is to kill all the mages. Again, this gives her a lot of flexibility, especially if the terrain is similar to this one. Uh, you you're gonna be at a, an, an advantage here. So let us just uh, kill this, then go back. As you can see, you can actually still go back. There you go. So she's really she's she's an assassin, but she will have to get her advantage from the terrain. Again, this is the last one. So if you cannot use her as an assassin, you actually have to use her as a buffer for your team she can actually work both ways you don't have you don't necessarily have to force the issue of um, making her move like an assassin so again her kit is very flexible you can use her with um, mobility 
or with um, with buffs. Okay, so my final thoughts for Michael. Um, again, um, I don't think you would want to build her with all mobility. That makes her very one-dimensional. So go with the top row and build her with uh, with good mobility and with the ability to buff her team. Eventually, she's going to be good, guys, in, in PvE. Um, she's going to be ranked SS in PV, PvE eventually. As you open her traits up, especially if you've opened this one, then she will be good. She will be very good, I tell you. Um, she will be, um, I think, difficult to, you know, to, to, to ruin or to equip so far for her equipment um as you can see here uh these are just basic these are just have to get her her unique uh what they call this unique equipment to make her better and also as much as possible give her physical hp and uh, physical defense because again survivability is a must she is vulnerable for shooters and that is it so again go with the top trait you won't go wrong with a top trait um she will be very versatile she'll help your team so much um in other words whatever you need for that situation she can be very flexible if you build her with the buffs and the mobility so thank you very much guys for staying this far take care stay safe this is the warden and i'm out of here